Liverpool boils down to this, folks. Of course, one game to rule them all over in the Championship with a lot of relegation matters still to be decided and the small matter of who will join Leicester in the Premier League. And also, we've got the matter of the playoffs. Two spaces still up for grabs. We'll get into it all of it next. <laughs> Today is match day number 46 over in the championship. We've been there. We've seen it. We've done it, of course. Now it's the time to wrap this season up with a Dickie Bow, who, of course, will be celebrating, who will be, of course, crying in the coffees. It could be me, guys. It could be bloody me. We'll get into it all of it in a second, of course. Big, big shout out to the VIPs. They are the patrons you know who won. Again, if you're new, smash it up the old subscribe. Before we get into all of that nonsense, we're going to recap, of course, last uh, matches between uh, in the championship uh, and see how we got on last of around there. So here are we. A go then. And guys and gals, of course, recapping the results on your screen now. Who to thunk it? Of course, QPR with a big, uh, was it 4 0 demolition job of Leeds? Not only did uh, that secure QPR safety, pretty much anyway, uh, but of course, dented significantly, significantly. Um, uh, leads this promotion hops, which of course was sealed uh, later on in the week. We'll talk about that shortly. Of course, Norwich City uh, again has fluffed their lines a little bit. Two-two draw over Swansea uh, to uh, put them in the playoffs or remain in the playoffs, but really not nailed on just yet. Bristol City rather a bit of a dead rubber there. Two 0 win it was for Bristol City under Manning. They looked a, a very organised unit and could be a team to watch out for next season. Millwall again pick up a one win over Plymouth. And Neil Harris did a fantastic job there. Plymouth are in a bit of bother and of course could be one of the teams in the to join. Rotherham going down. Cardiff City, uh, they got spanked by Middlesbrough over in Wales. 4-1 win for Borough again. Uh, watch out for them next year. Sheffield Wednesday uh, boosted their survival hopes. 3-0 winners over West Brom. 2-1 uh, win for me. Called it, lads, and it looks like they are safe for the most part. Uh, meanwhile, Borough, I mean Rovers against Coventry. 0-0, I called it. Uh, it should have been should have been a Rovers victory. Down to 10 men, Coventry. A bazillion chances, but we just couldn't find the back of the net. Meanwhile, in the Ding Dong Affair, it was a 1-1 draw between Huddersfield and Birmingham, which put Huddersfield pretty much on the brink. It also leaves Birmingham in those relegation spots for the time of asking. And we'll see if they can get out of it this weekend. Meanwhile, we got Watford, a one winners of a shit, a garbage Sunderland who really need a reboot because the players have been shitty awful for the past two months. And of course, coming to this week's action with uh, with some stuff on the line and uh, they've got no uh, form whatsoever. Meanwhile, Southampton the same. What's gone wrong with them? 1-0 loss to Stoke at home. Of course, they were competing for the top two just about 10 days ago, but now they're, of course, looking to just get some form heading into a busy playoff period. Hull, of course, picked up a thriller uh, and uh, against Ipswich. 3-3 free, free it was in the final score. 2-2 in my eyes, of course, keeps Hull's playoff dreams on track and also uh, nudged Ipswich close a point closer to our playoffs and Preston did get spanked by Leicester free nil win and their own backyard and of course Leicester secured the title so where are we now of course well we're here guys it is Leicester they are promoted done and they are champions they cannot be caught no matter what Ipswich are in a very very comfortable position a point or more and they're in the Premier League again it will be back to back promotions for Ipswich it will be back to back promotions for McKenna and what a fantastic job it would be for them to do it the only only way, the only way they could not do this is if Leeds pick up a monstrous 3-0 win, or just a 3-0, or, or a win, sorry, a win. And then, of course, if Ipswich were to shit the bed to a nearly 99.9% .9 relegated Huddersfield Town. Now, of course, we'll talk about that matter of relegation in just a second. Leeds, though, in the playoffs, it looks like playoffs. Southampton, Norwich and Westmont as it stands. But Hull still can mathematically creep into the players at the expense of a West Brom, at the expense of a Norwich with a bit of a goal swing, if that, of course, was to go. So three teams uh, remain and two spots are open for the players. Going down, we know about Rotherham, Huddersfield, pretty much there. I was just trying to do the math about this in the bath. I was doing the math in the bath. They, of course, still still technically mathematically uh, in this, but realistically, they need a, a 16 goal swing or something with them and the likes of a Plymouth or, or well, Plymouth basically um, to uh, to get themselves out of it. Um, well, when you think about it, if if, if Birmingham were to lose, and then Huddersfield were to win, forty eight points. Yeah, 
I don't know. It, it, it's, 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 it's unthinkable that uh, Huddersfield really get out of this. Is, they, they need a massive, massive goal swing and they've got uh, their Ipswich to play. So I, I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. Uh, so Birmingham, Plymouth, Sheffield Wednesday and Rovers compete for that final playoff spot or to avoid that final spot. So one of four will go down. Birmingham currently lie in that uh, relegation spot. Plymouth, of course, uh, also in that discussion and Rovers are not out of it at all by a long chalk so those are the situations right here right now what about the situation of course in the super brew well we're gonna have a look at, look at that right about now of course as we uh, uh gear up for the final full fixture list taylor b picking up at 19 points well done them 17.5 uh for 37 7 and w and g fan 15.5 well done to all you guys of course and the leaderboard currently sees staffel currently tops the charts for 70.5 points james bfc 462 uh with summer at 2018 460 so 10 points separates first from third of course there's 12 points here plus another four or five so there's around about 17 points left in this title race so realistically uh we're looking at stuff of ferris 77 and upwards for the title over in the prediction league. well actually tell a lie with the super brew there's there's a shit ton of points on for off i you know i don't even know what i'm doing been doing it 45 weeks of this season i still don't know what i'm doing anyway forget about that just keep on predicting you just don't know so here we go into the final game of action over the champion uh, in the championship and we're going to start right at the top of the shop there with stoke up against uh, Bristol City. Bit of dead rubber, nothing on this game. So let's get cracking now. These two sides played to the 18 times in 1984. Seven wins for Stoke, eight and nine wins for Bristol City. Two draws, of course. Stoke, 3 0 win their biggest score, 19 goals in those 18 games, 1.06 goals a game on average. Bristol City, 2 0 win their biggest score, 22 goals in 18 matches, 1.22 goals a game. Bristol City ending up with a good bit of form right here, right now. Unbeaten in at least the last six games, 75% form for them right now. They're 11th with 62 points for the campaign. Stoke, 58% form for them right now. Are just one defeat in the last six. They've also grinded out some results. 53 points for the season, 18th in the table. They will be back next season. Last time around, they're over at the Bet365. It was a 2 1 win for Bristol City. However, just the one win of the last six for the home side in this score. And that's when Bristol City beat Stoke back at Thrashton Gate back in November. Stoke coming into this on the back of that one win over Southampton. Back to back clean sheets for them. Maybe, just maybe, they've turned the corner under Schumacher. Bristol City, though, coming into this again unbeaten in the last six. 2 0 winners last time around over Rotherham. The odds for this one. One then we're looking at Stoke coming out to 21 to 20 for the victory. 20 to 5 is the draw. 11 to 4 is your way. When, of course, pressure's off here now. Pressure is off. And I think we'll see that in this game. Stoke will come out on top of the 3-1 win. And maybe, just maybe, give a Schumacher a big old boost heading into the off-season. Meanwhile, we go to the Stadium of Light or the Stadium of Shite. It's an off-off form or, or on the beach. Sunday night against Sheffield Wednesday side. Needing a point or more to secure themselves championship football next season. Played to the 15 times since 1996. We've got seven wins for Sunday and five wins for Wednesday. Three draws, of course. The Mackhams with a big 5-0 win. Their biggest score in 22 goals in 15 matches. 1.47 goals a game. Wednesday, though, 3-0 winners. The biggest score in 17 goals in 15. 15 games, 1.13 goals a game on average. Of course, over at the stadium, like Gavin Ward will be the referee. 67% form for Sheffield Wednesday, unbeaten in the last five. They are 20th at the moment of asking 50 points for the campaign against the Sunderland side. 33% form for them right now. Uh, just one defeat. Sorry, one win. One win in the last six. They have 15, 56 points for the season. If the season was another five games along, guess what? Sunderland will be in the relegation discussion right here right now. But of course, looking to hire a new manager uh, in the offseason with some names banded around. But these two sides did play each other, of course, uh, back at Sheffield Wednesday. It was a 3 0 win for Sunderland back in September. Uh, last time they played each other over in Sunderland uh, was a 1 0 win for Sunderland back in May 2022, of course. Sunderland 13 8 for the victory, 13 8 is your Wednesday, 12 5 is the draw. Everybody's back in Wednesday on this one. I'm going to go with a 1 1 draw, which again will be enough for Wednesday to be back here next season. I think that that will be uh, uh, the easiest way, easiest scenario for both. When uh, Swansea up against Millwall coming at you over at the Liberty Stadium, played each other 18 times since 2006. We've got Swansea with, a, with nine wins, four wins for Millwall. We've got five draws. Of course, the biggest win for the Welsh. 3 0 wins, going 27 goals in 18 matches, 1.50 goals a game. Millwall, though, 2 0 win the biggest one, 17 goals in 18 matches, 0.94 goals a game. Millwall, though, uh, four wins on the bounce for uh, Neil Harris's boys, 67 7 for them right now, 16 for the table, 56 points for the campaign. Up against Swansea, uh, of course, unbeaten also in the last four, 58 percent form for them, 13 for the table, 57 points for the season as well. Both in the mid table crunch clash here. Last time around, the over end Wales, it was a 2 2 draw back in August 2022. The reverse 
fixture at the Den back in September was a free winner win for Swansea. Swansea though, odds for this one, 21 to 20 is your mill. Actually, last time around over at in Wales, should I say, uh, was a 2-2 draw way back in August 2022. But of course, the odds here, 21 to 20 is your Swansea, 13 to 5 is your mill, 5 to 2 is the draw. Again, pressure's off for both of these two sides. Going to go with a 2-1 win for the Welsh, uh, who uh, again could be a team to watch out for next season. I think uh, uh, on the down low, on the down low, I don't think they'll be one of people's fancy teams, but I think uh, uh, under this new regime, new management, they might have a new uh, way of life. Meanwhile, Coventry, uh, of course, had a long old season. Of course, we're in action midweek against Ipswich. Again, uh, picked up a, a loss there heading into this one, but it is up against QPR over at the Rico. Played each other 27 times in 1993. We've got 11 wins apiece. Five draws, of course. Coventry, though, 3 0 win the biggest score. 32 goals in 27 matches. 1.19 goals a game. QPR, though, 5 1 win their biggest score. 35 goals in 27 matches. 1.30 goals a game. QPR, though, 58% form for them. Right now, back to back wins for them. Just one defeat in the last four. They're 17th. 53 points for the season. They will be back next season. And Kofi Entes could be the man to put them in the right direction. Meanwhile, Coventry, though, coming to this on really bad form. Winless in the last six. Now, 8% form for them right now. Nine Ninth in the table, 64 points for the season as well. Last time around at the Rico, it was a 2 win for Coventry back in November 2021. Uh, the reverse fixture over at Loftus Road back in September was a 3-1 win for Coventry, who have won three on the bounce against QPR, making a look at for four this week. 5-4 to four is, your Q, is your Coventry here, 11-5 is your QPR, 12-5 is the draw. Again, Coventry may be in shit form. QPR, of course, safe as ours is, looking forward to next season with Cuffy Entis, but they'll lose this one. Coventry with a 2-0 win, uh, moving in to the uh, off-season and they go and in will it be here Ipswich Town against Huddersfield Town who of course could be party and celebrate and, and, and commiserations on both ends of the spectrum coming to at Portman Road these two sides played each other 21 times since 1995 seven wins apiece seven draws as well could not be tighter however Ipswich of course 5-1 win in their locker 3-0 a 30 goal scored in 21 matches 1.43 goals a game Huddersfield a 2-0 win the biggest score 28 goals in 21 matches 1.33 goals a game heading into this one Huddersfield though 42% for for them right now just one win in six they are 23rd 45 points for the season they are pretty much down goal swing dramatically would need it needed uh, a big win and a, and, a, and a heavy defeat for or Plymouth or something like that that's the only way they could come out of it Ipswich Town no 58% form for them right now just one win in five of course not great form for them but of course they come into in those automatic spots in second with 93 points for the season Huddersfield though haven't won in the last four matches uh, and the last time that these two sides played each other though at Portman Road it was a one near win for Huddersfield, way back in October 2016, Huddersfield are unbeaten against Ipswich over the last three. Just one defeat against them over the last six. So maybe, just maybe, they could be their bogey side. 4-1 uh, to one on is your Ipswich, 5-1 to one is the draw, 11-1 is your long shots. That's Huddersfield. They're not going to do this, guys. They are not going to do this. It's going to be a 2-0 win for Ipswich. They'll be back in the Premier League. Would you believe it? I didn't believe it. I, I thought they wouldn't do this. But goodness gracious me, what a season. Not only is it a tremendous season, uh, that's possibly the best performance I've seen from a, a, a promoted team last season. I know people say about Sheffield United did it with, with Matey Boy. This, though, is absolutely fantastic. So well done to Ipswich, who look destined to be in the Premier League. They'll be joined by Leicester, of course, uh, uh, who will take on Blackburn Rovers at the King Power, uh, also on the final game of the season. May the fourth be with you. 19 times they have played each other. This is 1904. Six wins for Leicester, seven wins for Rovers, six draws, of course. Now, the biggest win for Leicester, 4 1 wins, scoring 26 goals in 19 games, 1.37 goals a game on average. Rovers, though, 3 0 win the biggest, scoring 24 goals in 19 games, 1.26 goals a game. Rovers, 50% forward for them right now, 1 2 lost to and drawn to over the last six. They are 19th, 50 points for the campaign against the Leicester side, who, of course, had a bit of a wobble but now three wins on about 67% form for them right now they're top 97 points they will not be stopped at the top uh, of course now these two sides did play each other over in uh, uh, Rovers Ewood Park back in October 2023 of course 4-1 win it was for Leicester however the last time they played each other at King Powers a 2-1 win for Rovers just last year in the FA Cup uh, Rovers did a job on them. So just one loss of the last three for Rovers, but one loss also, uh, actually uh, 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 two losses for Leicester. So heading into the last three, Rovers picked up a couple of wins against, uh, uh, actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. What am, I, what am I talking about? It's one, one, loss, one, draw, one over the last three. But uh, coming into this Leicester 6-4 on for the victory, 11-4 is your draw, 9-2 is your Rovers. Now, of course, it's... it's, it's uh, 
Leicester are champions. We are, we as Rovers fans are hoping they are coming in with a bit of a hangover, party mode all week and all that kind of jazz. That's what we're hoping for. But realistically, they are professionals. People say they want to get over the 100 point barrier, all this kind of stuff. And of course, records want to be broken. Uh, Vardy, I'm sure, wants to get into double figures or, or continue scoring more. I mean, he's already got double figures. You know what I mean? He wants to, to rub it in a little bit. And uh, what a way to do it by uh, putting Rovers in a bit of a, a squirmy situation. So, uh, as much as I want to see it, uh, I just, I fear, I fear us here yeah, going into this last game. A draw is enough to keep Rovers in the division. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get it. I don't think it's going to be easy for Rovers. I think we're going to lose to Leicester 2 1. I think we might have a, get a bit of fight about us. Um, uh, we might grind out a draw. But um, it will be more hope than anything else. Meanwhile, we go over through another Ding Dong affair. It's Plymouth against Hull City, a game which has a lot riding on it, both at the top and the bottom of the tier. But that's right. Of course, Plymouth uh, hosting us at Home Park. Darren Bond is the referee. Played to the 10 times, 2005. Got four wins for Plymouth, five wins for Hull, one draw, of course. Plymouth, 3 2 win, their biggest score, 10 goals in those 10 games as a goal a game on average. Meanwhile, Hull rocking a 3 0 win themselves. Scoring 13 goals in those 10 games, 1.30 goals a game as well. Hull unbeaten in the last six, 75% form for them right now. They're seventh, 70 points for the season, of course. 42% form for Plymouth. Back to back defeats their 21st, 48 points for the season. Now, this is a monumental game for both sides. Hull's form is good right now, really good. And uh, concern so good for the other playoff sides. This is kind of one of those uh, uh, come out of nowhere scenarios. Even though Hull have been flirting around the playoffs this season, they've not really cemented the spot all the campaign, but the form is good. When you look at the likes of Leeds, when you look at the likes of Southampton, when you look at the likes of West Brom, uh, the form is bad or everywhere else. So Hull, should they manage to get a victory here, they might just be, uh, the momentum might be rolling for them to cause one of the major surprises uh, of, uh, of championship history of course. Meanwhile, on the other end, Plymouth trying to do the unthinkable and stick around in this division, of course, uh, but back-to-back -back defeats, of course, and not playing in their hands. The two sides did play each other at the KCOM earlier in the season, or the MKM Stadium. as a 1-1 draw back in September. The last time they played each other, though, over at Plymouth, it was a 3-0 win for Hull. Hull are unbeaten against Plymouth over the last four, uh, and just conceded one goal against over the last four matches. Uh, the bookies' odds for this one, 5-2 to two is your Plymouth. Even Stevens is your Hull. 11-4 is, of course, the draw here, guys. I'm going to go with a 1-0 win for Hull. That's right, and uh, and uh, they'll still boost their chances. But of course, will there be enough to get into the playoffs? Meanwhile, Birmingham City against Norwich City again, another game which of course has uh, deciding factors on both the top and the bottom. Birmingham under Gary Rowe up against Norwich and David Wagner played to the thirty six times in nineteen eighty five. We got ten wins for Birmingham, seventeen wins for Norwich, nine draws. Of course, the biggest win for the Brummies, four nil wins, scoring forty six goals in thirty six matches, one point two eight goals a game on average. Norwich though two nil win, the biggest scoring fifty three goals in thirty six matches, one point four seven goals a game the Canaries 58% form for them right now unbeaten in the last five they are fifth setting three points for the season up against the Birmingham side 50% form for them right now one two lost two and drawn two heading into this one 22, point, 22 uh, spots in the league 47 points for the campaign against the fifth place Norwich 73 points for the season of course last time around at St Andrews was a 2-1 win for Norwich back in August 2022 the reverse fixture at Carrow Road 2 no win it was for Norwich way back in September Norwich have actually won six on the bounce against Birmingham heading into this game and of course uh the situation in the table is thus uh, of course a draw is enough for Nor Norwich to uh, secure themselves into top six and into the playoffs the only way they'll fall out of the playoffs of course is if they lose by two or three goals and Hull win by two or three goals in their respective matches there's a seven goal swing between the two sides so a defeat from Norwich uh, and a win for Hull three or four goals either side and then of course we're looking at a bit of a surprise there but the bookies have this one uh, at uh, Birmingham uh, 13 to 10 for the victory 2 to 1 is your Norwich and 5 to 2 is the draw Birmingham on the flip side down the foot of the table they need a win they need a win a draw is not going to be good enough because of course their goal deficit between themselves and Plymouth is not in in their favour, so they need to win this game. Uh, which way am I going to go on this one? I am actually going to go with, I think, the Brummies to get a point here, which means I don't think it's going to be enough uh, for me. And we'll get to the calculations in just a second. Into the other four games here now. Not much really riding on these ones, but it is West Brom up against uh, Preston. West Brom could fall out of the playoffs. They need uh, a win. Of course, a, dr a draw. I don't think a draw is good enough. But anyway, uh, take it on Preston at the Hawthorns. 22 times they have played each other since 2000. 13 wins for the Baggies, 7 wins for the Nobbers. Two draws, of course. 4 0 win the biggest for West West Brom scoring 36 goals in 22 matches, 1.64 goals a game. Nobbers, 3-0 win their biggest, scoring 21 goals in 22 matches, 0.95 goals a game. Both sides.
Price coming to this in pretty shitty form. Preston losing four in the bounce, finishing 10th right now. 63 points for the season against the West Brom side, who are 6th. 72 points for season three defeats on the spin and not looking good at the moment. Last time around, they're over at the Hawthorns. It was a 2-0 win for uh, West Brom back in December 2022. The reverse fixture at Deepdale, 4-0 win it was for West Brom uh, over Preston. So back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back -back clean sheets, six goals scored in the last two games between West Brom uh, uh, and uh, Preston. Of course, the odds here, we're looking at uh, West Brom, 29 on for the victory, 7-1 is the draw, 16-5 is your away win. And again, the table suggests a draw should be good enough. Uh, of course, that will put them in, in, in an okay position because Hull uh, would need 11 goal swing on that one. Uh, but a defeat uh, would put them in a bit of a pickle. But it looks like West Brom should be there. Uh, but we'll see about that. And I think I've got them coming through this one against the Preston side who look a bit shit. 2 0 win for West Brom. Uh, comfortably done. Maybe even challenging for that fifth spot with a win as well. Meanwhile, Middlesbrough up against Watford. Dead rubber here. Nothing much on this one and something to uh, explore next season. Of course, Middlesbrough with Carrick. Watford with Tom Cleverley who is now appointed official uh, manager. Of course, played to the 27 times in 1993. Eight wins for Borough, 11 wins for Watford. Eight draws, of course. Now the biggest win for the hosts. 4-1 wins. Scoring 31 goals in 27 matches. 1.15 goals a game. Watford 2-0 win their biggest. Scoring 33 goals in 27 matches. 1.22 goals a game. Watford 50% form for them at the moment. Just one defeat in the last six. They are 14th in the table. 56 points for the season. Borough though, eight for the table. 66 points for the campaign. Just one defeat in the last six. Uh, and of course, uh, Latty Laugh scoring for fun. Last time around, the oh, at Riverside, it was a 2 0 win for Middlesbrough back in January 2023. The reverse fixture at Vicarage Road, 3 2 win and was for Borough way back when. The odds here 11 8 on is your Borough, 14 5 is your draw, 15 4 is the draw. It's going to be Borough once again, 2 1 win for them as they look to, of course, boost their chances uh, next season, I guess. Meanwhile, Leeds against Southampton, which could be a playoff final over at Ellen Road. It is Farker up against Martin, uh, Russell Martin, played to the 38 times since 1983. 18 wins for Leeds, 12 wins for Southampton, 8 draws. Of course, Leeds with a 3 0 win, their biggest score, 48 goals in 38 matches, 1.26 goals a game. Southampton, their 3 0 win, their biggest score, 43 goals in 38 matches, 0.87 goals a game. Of course, the Saints, three defeats on the spin for them, 50% form for them at the moment. They are fourth, 84 points for the campaign against the Leeds side, who are uh, third, 90 points for the season. They will be third no matter what, 42% form for them right now, just one win in the last six. Now, these two sides did play to the Allen Road way back in February 2023. That was in the Premier League. Both of these two clubs were in the Prem last season. But of course, you know, the potential is that both sides could be here in the championship next season. Of course, they did play Charlotte at St. Mary's back in September. It was a 3-1 win for Southampton. The odds for this one, though, we do have Leeds coming at you. 7-4 on for the Rugby United 2 is your Saints. 10-3 is the draw. This one might play out as a draw here. Not much to be playing for here. I've gone with a 2-1 win for Leeds. But again, these two sides might meet up again in London. And then wrap it up, wrap it up. Already relegated Rotherham with, of course, uh, Steve Evans at the helm. Up against the Cardiff City side, who have done all right this season. Played each other 16 times in 2003. Two wins for Rotherham, nine wins for Cardiff. Five draws, of course. Now the biggest win for the hosts. 2-1 win, scoring 15 goals in 16 games. 0.94 goals again. Cardiff, though, 5-0 win the biggest, scoring 29 goals in 16 matches. 1.81 goals again. 50% form for Cardiff. Won three, lost three over the last six. They're 12th. 62 points for the season against the Rotherham side. Unbeat, uh, winless in five. 25% form for them right now. 24th in the table. 24 points for the campaign. As well, last time around, uh, do we have that? Do we? I'm not going to bother. 13 to five is your Rotherham. To 11 to 10 is your Cardiff. 12 to five is the draw. It will be a one 0 win for Rotherham. We will say goodbye to the championship with a win. And of course, if my mathematics is correct. This is what the Tampa will look like at the end of the campaign. Leicester will get that 100 points. Ipswich Town will be with them in the Premier League next season. And then it will be Leeds, Southampton, West Brom, Norwich by the skin of the teeth. Uh, in those playoffs, going down Rotherham, Huddersfield and Birmingham, goodness gracious me, that's my take on it guys, not much to look forward to I'm afraid, and I just can't wait for the season to be done with, it's been an absolute train wreck for Rovers fans, but that is it, we'll be back for those playoffs, but until then we are done.